My name's Joyce Alec and I'm from the Pilbara. I was born under a tree in Robin and I'm a proud Gurama Malathuni woman. I'm standing here today on a really important waterway in my country. And this waterway is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. It's her song line. It's her song for us. She carries our ceremonies. She carries our hearts and our souls. She carries everything about us. And I want to take you on a journey across our nation to visit First Nations people on their country, in their country, telling their own stories about how they protect their country and especially their waterways. We have a real battle on our hands and that battle is keeping our connection to the country. It's being drilled, it's being fracked, it's being poisoned by radioactive waste. We have so many things now attacking our country and attacking our water sources. These are some of the stories that we're going to be hearing as we travel across Australia and listen to the First Nations people and their stories, their incredible stories of resilience, of their love for country, and the reason why it is so, so important to them to look after this country. Before it goes any further, we need to stop. It's heartbreaking when you look around. The warning signs we've been getting, time is so critical now. It's that connection to the country. It's about protecting and preserving Mother Earth. We don't own the country, we protect it. So come with me while we go on a journey across Australia and find the heart of country. The real heart of country. As I prepare to travel, I want to ground myself on my own country, here in the Pilbara. I open my heart and I let it guide me. Because for me, this story is deeply personal. Our country is hurting and I need the world to know. Rio Tinto has been here for more than 50 years. Every time they dig a hole or desecrate ancient rock art, it's dirty air, dirty water, dirty everything. Next week marks one year since Rio Tinto destroyed one of Australia's most significant ancient sites, the 46,000-year-old rock shelters at Jukin Gorge in the remote Pilbara region. Now, one year on, a federal parliamentary inquiry is still investigating how it happened. And it's not just Rio. Woodside's proposed Scarborough gas climate bomb threatens ancient rock art in Morajuga. Our law and song lines are in these rocks. This is history and stories that have crossed millennia. That's me at the United Nations in Geneva, right next to my dear niece, Raylene Cooper. Two traditional custodians speaking out for country against Woodside. Mining and fossil fuel projects are fracturing our land destroying our rock art, polluting our waterways, poisoning the climate and changing life here and everywhere forever. We can see the deterioration um, on the Ngura, on our country, and time is so critical now, um, given, you know, the warning signs we've been getting, um, what our Mother Earth's been giving us, the floodings, the heat, the heat waves that are coming in extreme weather. It's getting more and more evident The country we are so worried about also calms us, teaches us what to do next. When Ray and I are together on country, we're always drawn to the water. (laughs) 
and Ray's always up for a swim. Come on! On country is our strength. My old people, my ancestors walked this land and they were here to protect this and to keep it safe, to preserve it for us right now, for my children, my great-grandchildren. You know, it's been here forever. For me, as for Ray, country and family are at my core. Today, I'm with my big sister's grandson, Mark, showing him a very special place for the first time. It's a joy to see Mark connecting to his country and its water. Like, I just feel this spark inside of me, you know, joy and happiness out here. You know, as a young person, how do you feel about what's happening with mining and, and the destruction of country and... We're out here, this is a sacred site for us, and not just that, it's our home. We can't keep doing this to Mother Earth. This country gave us life, it's like our mother. That's right. And we can do everything in our power to protect this place, all places. That's so true. I'm so glad for you here. My heart is full and I'm ready for my journey. I've crossed this huge continent from the Pilbara to Gomorrah land in northern New South Wales. I'm here to walk with and learn from Gomorrah traditional owner, Polly Cutmore. We're near Narrabri, in a place that's very special to Polly and her people, an ancient gorge landscape formed over millions of years. And Polly leads me to that precious lifeblood, as dear to her on her land as it is to me on mine, water. This special place moves Polly and me, and it's a while before we're ready to talk. Our country is here, but we seem to be losing the fight with connecting and just seeing what's going on. What's on Polly's mind is what's brought me here. The Gomorrah are fighting a fight I know too well, a fight against the might of the fossil fuel industry. Santos cannot take our lands. Those lands are passed down for generations to generations to generations and they will be there when my generations come and the next generations come. We're here to stop the destruction of water, land and the ecosystem that is the Pilega scrub, or Billiga as we call it, as Gomorrah people. Not far from where we sit in the Pilliga forest, a battle has been raging for years. The gas giant Santos's plan to drill 850 coal seam gas wells in the forest has been fiercely opposed by the Gomorrah, including Polly. The Gomorrah say if the fracking goes ahead, it will devastate their land, culture and water. And underneath, sustaining one of the driest continents on Earth, right where Santos wants to drill, Australia's largest groundwater reservoir, the Great Artesian Basin. You know, we're very protected of that great artesian water. It sustains us. It's who we are. Out here, water is women's business, and Polly and other Gomorrah women have been taking the fight up to Santos and state and federal governments that have backed Santos's Narrabri project for years. The threat is real for all of us. From the rivers to the oceans, we are at crisis point. Gunditjmara country, on Victoria's southwest coast, where whale watchers from far and wide gather every winter to try and catch a glimpse of migrating giants as they travel from Antarctica to warmer northern waters. But for the local Gunditjmara people, the whales are so much more than annual visitors. Blue whales, humpbacks and the southern right whales, known to the Gunditjmara as Kuntavur. Here, the whales are ocean family, and the Gunditjmara are worried about their family. 
We feel it when there's damage done to our country. We feel it when our kin are, are yelling out to us, singing out to us for help and they don't have the same voice that we have. So we have to really speak loud and make ourselves heard um, in protection of our ocean kin. Yaren Bundle is a Gunditjmara whale dreaming custodian. And we've met where the Hopkins River meets the Southern Ocean near Warrnambool, a place where ancient pathways known as songlines meet. But a new, very different chapter in the history of the songlines is being written now. The oil and gas multinational Conoco Phillips has plans to explore for undersea gas through seismic blasting, using powerful underwater blasts of compressed air to survey the seabed. And so that's going to disrupt all marine life in the area, from the zooplankton right up to the blue whales and all life in between. There's, there's going to be a major impact on our, our family, our clan, our country and our songlines, which are the most sacred, important connection that we have to our country. And the whale songline extends all the way through our sea country the song that we're trying to protect and we need to have this song in the world. We say absolutely no to seismic blasting in our sea country. Along the coastline at Apollo Bay, I meet Jack Pascoe of Ewan Ancestry from the south coast of New South Wales, where whale song lines are also treasured and stretch back millennia. Jack has lived on Gunditjmara country most of his life and feels a deep connection to this spectacular coastline and the whales that linger and pass each year. There's been a, a real history in the Otway Basin of, um, out off the coast here, of, of prospecting for, for gas. And they use that technique of blasting large amounts of sounds towards the sea floor. We're concerned that uh, we don't know enough about the impact of seismic blasting, both on on the food sources that, that our whales rely upon, but also on uh, their movements and their being moved off and towards these, these loud sounds. And we know it influences the way that, that whales move on their migratory song lines. And what, you know, what impact does that have on these ancient song lines that have, have been in place for so forever? In my hands, I hold a piece of whale bone and a song stone given to me by the Mirtich, Mereng, the ocean, our sea country. And part of the message that I'd like to share to everybody, but especially the gas industry and the state and federal governments, that these are ancient waters, not yours to destroy. Respect the ancient past honour the present and protect the future. The fight to maintain First Nations connection to country can feel overwhelming. One step forwards and three steps back. But you know what? Sometimes something wonderful happens. While I was travelling around Australia to make this film, Something great happened in South Australia. A six-year fight ends in victory. Traditional owners of the Kimberland opposed a nuclear waste dump since it was first nominated in 2017. This is symbolic. It's very, it's, it's very emotional. You know, it's the fight that we continue. A federal court judge has effectively cancelled the controversial nuclear dump planned at Kimber on Eyre Peninsula. She ruled in favour of the traditional owner's complaint that the minister's choice of the site was biased. What a win for people power. Bungalow traditional owners have fought hard against the federal government's plan to build a nuclear waste dump at Kimber on South Australia's Eyre Peninsula. They spoke up for their country and the court listened. It's a significant site and I'm glad that they're not going to destroy anything around in that area. I'd been inspired by the bungalow's commitment to country just a few months earlier at the Australian Nuclear Free Alliance gathering in the Flinders Ranges, just a couple of hours' drive from Kimber. I knew immediately the bungalow weren't going to back down. 
It's that connection to the country. It's about protecting and preserving Mother Earth. We are, we don't own the country, we protect it. It wasn't the destination. Bangla, we've been fighting this nuclear waste for going on to six years now. We've been fighting this process for that long, and yeah, and so it's getting that word out and continuing the fight of our old people and fighting together to stop this nuclear waste, to stop it so it doesn't destroy our mum, Mother Earth. There was no consultation from day one from the government with the Bangla people. That is a woman's site and I don't want it to be destroyed because you break that story, you cannot put that story back together. First Nations people have too often borne the brunt of Australia's radioactive nuclear industry. I reckon we should leave it in the ground. Ranger, Jabaluka, Maralinga. Words that speak of the toxic intergenerational legacy of uranium. But not Kimber, thanks to the bungalow. We want governments, we want other people to know how significant our fight is. We don't want other people to go through the trauma that we have been going through. We need to stand together to make sure that nuclear waste is not deposited on our country. Change is possible and that changes everything. We've heard from elders and we've heard from young people. It's incredible, the resilience and the strength that our First Nations people have the strength to look after their country and stand strong for their country. Still singing ceremony, still connecting to our water, still connecting to the life flow of Mother Earth. It's what keeps us all going, our stories, sharing our stories together. We're at a really crucial time right now on this planet. We're at crisis situation and we need to act now. Stop big industry coming in, fracking, putting poison in the ground, taking resources out of the ground, messing with the natural balance and flow of Mother Nature. We need to be able to create a new way forward for our kids. We need to make sure that the water is maintained strong, fresh, clean with no contamination. So the film ends here, but the work doesn't end. We hope you've enjoyed it and you've listened deeply with your heart. I hope it's made you feel the way it's made me feel. Strong, resilient, ready to get up and go again tomorrow. <laughs>